Hi, I'm David Lawrence, and in this video I'm going to teach you early standing motor control exercises to help improve your sense of balance and control over a prosthetic device. Again, starting with a prosthetic, it's really important to get the sense of what you need to know. There's some basic terminology that's going to be really important. Any therapist, doctor, healthcare worker is going to be working with you on these things and saying these terms. So it's important for you that you understand them. That first term is something called proprioception. Proprioception is basically a term of understanding where you are in space. You are wired to know that. For example, Keith right now holding on to this walker, he would close his eyes and he knows he's holding on to the walker. I know I'm sitting in a chair. I know my feet are on the floor because I'm wired to know that. However, when we're dealing with a prosthetic interface, we've now changed that connection to the ground. Proprioception is still the key. He has to understand where he is in space, but he's got to figure out how to know where he is in space by the input coming into the residual limb through the socket that'll tell him about the, where the prosthetic limb is in space. So proprioception is that first term you really got to understand. The second term that's really important to understand is called the center of mass or center of gravity. That's that point right in the middle of you that if, you, if we shish kebabbed you, you would balance even weight in all directions. For sake of arguments, that's basically between the belly button and the spine. So envision a point right in the middle of the body. That's your center of mass. The next term is your base of support. So if we look down at the feet, your base of support, if I took a marker across the front of Keith's toes, back the outside of one foot, across the heels and up the other, filled in that whole black box, that whole black box would be his base of support, right? So it's the area underneath the, the remaining foot, the prosthetic foot, and the area in between. Now, by definition then, balance is the ability to keep your center mass on top of your base of support. If Keith moves that center mass outside the base of support, he's either going to fall or he has to create a new base of support or move his foot. That's called walking. Walking is a series of controlled falls. You let your center of mass move forward, you move your foot forward to create a new base of support, and you walk. So really important when a patient's getting started to understand that these are things they've taken for granted their whole life, but they need to get a better understanding of how do I recapture something that I learned once when I was very, very young, and I don't remember the process. The process is not going to be that different. So to regain proprioception, we need to focus on three things. One is finding center. Two is weight shift control. Three is single limb support or stance control on the prosthetic side. With that being said, we need to have our patient have a place to practice. So you could use a walker like Keith does here. You could also use two crutches. You might use two high back chairs. If we're in a clinic, we'd love to use parallel bars. That's the most stable place to work. And we love the parallel bars, but at home you won't have that. You could use the kitchen counter and the island. You could be holding onto the kitchen sink. Just make sure you have a good solid chair or your wheelchair locked behind you in case you lose your balance and you have a good stable position. Then, once we're gonna get started and you have that sense of that position uh, and, and where you're at and feeling good about it, you really want some sort of feedback in front of you, and that means a mirror. If you could put any kind of cheap little mirror in front of you to see what you're doing. Why is gonna become really important in just a second. When a patient gets started on a prosthetic, they've only had one leg for a few months. So if you've had a amputation, you don't get a prosthetic immediately. So a good, well-meaning physical therapist has taught you how to shift your weight onto that right leg, put all your weight there, balance there as you hop or move around. So you're, that becomes your center. So now that we say, well, if I'm gonna walk, my center of mass needs to be in the middle of my base of support, because if it's lined over one foot, I have an oblong machine, a machine that's almost like a car trying to drive with a flat tire. So if I'm gonna find center, I need to be able to move my center of mass back to the middle. But that's not gonna feel like middle, right? Because you've taught yourself, you've done a good job, taught yourself how to balance on one leg. So we've gotta get you in center, look in the mirror and say, gosh, when I'm centered, I feel like I'm 60-40, 60 60% 60 of my weight on the prosthetic, only 40% on the sound limb. Right, that's where center will really be. Because if you feel like you're 50-50, then your weight is too heavy on the prosthetic side. So we have to relearn where center is from where we've taught ourselves how to hop on one leg. So finding center is simply that. Find center in the mirror, even though it feels weird, like I'm too far to the prosthetic side, and see if you can hold that position. 
If you can, take this hand off and see if you can still hold it. If you can, switch hands, hold it. If you can't hold it and you start to keep your hand up there for a second, keep it and start to drift back, then can I fix it? Can I get myself back to center? If you can, great. If you can't, put your hand back down. Eventually, you can pick both hands up and hold center. If you lose center, you've got to look in the mirror and say, no, no, let me get back to here. But center is not going to feel like center. So that's number one. Find center. It's a very simple practice. You can spend 20, 30 seconds and then put your hands back down, rest it. You can also try looking in a mirror and then look away from the mirror and for 30 seconds, come back and see if you were able to hold it. See if you understand or get a feel where center really is, proprioception, where truly is center. So that's number one. Number two is weight shift control. Now this is where things become more interesting as far as your dynamic ability to control where you are in space. So the first thing you're gonna start with here is have the patient just weight shift towards the right side and they go, well, that's really simple. That feels very much like home. But if I come back and have them weight shift to the left side, that's gonna feel much more like I'm not sure if I really wanna go out there. Remember, the defense mechanisms in your brain are telling you, don't do this, don't shift over here, because if I didn't have a prosthetic on, I'd be falling. So you've taught yourself not to come here. So we're working on that process of getting comfortable with that movement. So as he's going to go back and forth on that weight shift and just keep moving slowly back and forth, He's not just moving, he's mainly moving his hips, not his shoulders, don't move your shoulders so much, just kind of hips to the right and hips to the left. And while he's doing that, he's gonna be thinking about three things that are very important to him. One, foot floor interface. That means when he's here, that foot is pretty level. Now notice when Keith gets over here, he's on the outside edge of that foot. Really important that if, even if Keith doesn't like the feeling, I want him to know, you need to know where that is. You need to be thinking, I'm on the outside edge of my foot. I don't want to be surprised by that. I want to know when my foot feels level on the ground. And as crazy as it sounds, having a rubber foot and a carbon keel, they are carbon um, internal foot, that you can really feel it on the ground, you can. Because remember, your brain still has all the wiring inside there and the imagery for where your foot is. That's why you have phantom sensation and pain issues. That's absolutely normal. But if I come over here, his brain can pick up on the fact that He's on the outside edge of that foot, and where it feels like it was on his foot will be on the prosthetic foot. So as he goes to the other direction, he'll have a hard time feeling that load. He'll have to kind of push his weight down into it to try to feel the inside edge of the foot. That's number one. Now, to understand how he connects proprioceptively to that is he has to understand socket pressure. So the next issue is the socket interface. So when he shifts to this side, he feels the outside edge of the foot, he also feels the pressure in the socket is quite different than it was when he was in the center. Whether he likes it or not, he has to correlate that that pressure means I'm on the outside edge of my foot. Great. And if I go the other way, I'm on the inside of my foot. I have to try and feel that pressure and come back to center. So that's the second issue. Does he feel the pressure in the socket? Does he understand how it relates to the foot position on the ground? Those two things take a lot of thought process. And the number three is the motor control aspect, the sensory motor integration we are, use, which means when you're over here and you feel the sensation of pressure in the socket in that foot position and you wanna change your position, don't walk like you're walking on a stilt, walk within the prosthesis, which means you're gonna push into the outside wall of the prosthetic and push yourself back to center. Now, if you haven't seen, you should, or looked at our videos on pre-prosthetic exercises, dynamic residual limb exercises, you should watch that video. Because that video, you learn how to put a towel roll underneath your residual limb, push into that towel roll, and press your body weight up. Now you're gonna basically use that exact same exercise in standing to press yourself back into neutral position. You can do that side to side. Then you wanna work on that front to back, back on the heels, feel the toes come off the ground. Feel the pressure socket in the socket change. Press into the back wall and press yourself forward. Feel your weight come into the toes, a little bit of arch in your back the heels start to come off the ground. The pressure in the socket gets high. I can push into the front wall, as long as I'm under load, that knee will stay locked, and I bring myself back to neutral. If I want, I can combine those things, which is either diagonal motions or what I call hula hoops, which is Keith just kind of moves around and gets used to moving his body in a diagonal pattern all the way around in both directions. Same thing, muscles tight, working from plane to plane, pressure in the sockets change, position of the foot changes, none of that are you passive. So at no time when you're getting started with a prosthetic, do you wanna be mentally passive? 
You want to be mentally active, thinking, what do I feel? What's happening down there? How am I getting myself reconnected with the ground? And the third component is a stool step, a single limb step up, where you're going to spend time on the prosthetic and learn how to get your other foot off the ground. Now we're going to look at the third component here. Remember we've looked at finding center, we've looked at weight shift control, now we have to work on unilateral stance control. Why? Because we need that prosthetic on the ground and for you to have balance so you can get your other foot off the ground. Gait is almost 50% of the time you've got your only leg you know and trust, your sound limb, in the air. So to do that you have to have great confidence to get your weight on the prosthetic. So two things are really important along this component is can he find center or the balance point of the prosthetic? And he can control that with his strength inside the socket. So the first thing Keith is going to do is shift towards this prosthetic side till he starts to feel a little bit more weight on the outside of the foot than the middle of the foot, and a little bit more on the front of the foot than the back of the foot. At that point in time, he's going to tighten his butt muscles and his groin muscles, the two muscles that are going to squeeze into the back inside corner of the prosthetic. That's going to pull the prosthetic socket up underneath him, stabilize the device. From there, he steps up with his sound foot and puts it on the step. I want him to relax at this point, but keep himself in this position. Then re-engage those two muscles and bring himself back down. So each time, he's shifting in, trying to find the balance point. Believe it or not, as crazy as it might feel early on, there is a balance point on that prosthetic where you can do this and feel fully in control. But when you're starting with your weight shift on and with this whatever small stool you want or step up you want, you are weight shifting in, you feel the pressure on the outside edge of the prosthetic, a little bit to the front, you tighten the butt muscles and groin muscles, feel like it really tucks the socket up underneath you, and then you step up, good, and then step down. Now with all these drills, we follow the same progression. If you can do that with two hands easily, you always take off the same side hand and try it without. Shift in, tighten up, step up, and step, tighten up, and step down. If you can do that, you switch hands to the other side. Don't do it right now. And then you can, and, and then you ultimately can go to no hands, where you take both hands off and think to yourself, okay, I'm going to shift in, tighten up, and I can step up, control, tighten up those muscles, step down, control. Notice how he's moving faster. It takes a little more balance control, a little more awareness of where am I in space, where am I, where am I on top of the prosthetic limb. All right, when we're dealing with bilateral prosthetic devices, the process is the same as far as we need to gain proprioceptive awareness of position in space. That means understanding, without being fully connected to the ground, how you're connected to the sockets and how the sockets are connected to the feet, which gives you your connection to the ground. Difference is, with bilaterals, there isn't one sound limb or remaining limb connected neurologically to the ground. So you're not as likely to be shifting to that side and only use the prosthetic as an outrigger. Because of that, you tend to be centered much easier from the beginning, which in many ways makes it easier to learn to walk as well. Many bilateral patients can actually walk more rhythmically than a unilateral patient quicker because there isn't one leg that functioning with neurologic connection to the ground and the other one not connected. However, the problem then with bilaterals often becomes balance. Finding that point without the connection to the ground on one side as to where do I find my balance. So weight shift control becomes very important. In a position like this, patient really is going to work on that sense of being able to shift their weight out over one prosthetic and get a sense of what does it feel like when my weight is getting way outside of one foot and on the instep of the other. Can I again feel that foot on the floor? Can I feel the pressure change in my socket when I'm over there? And the pressure on the other socket feels like it almost goes away. It's hard to feel the pressure on the other socket. And I want to get myself back to neutral. So I need to, one, first know that I'm out here and feel that pressure. But I also then need to use those muscles on the outside edge to press into the outside edge of the socket and press myself back to center. And then I want to shift the other way, get a sense of knowing, ooh, when I feel like I'm getting out here and it's feeling starting to feel a little uncomfortable, like I might fall, I need to tighten those muscles on the outside, push into the outside wall, and bring myself back to a center position. I can do that front to back. So if I come back and my knees stay straight, my toes start to come off the ground. So if those knees are straight and no toes start to come off the ground a little bit and I feel like I'm going back, I can tighten those butt muscles and pull myself back up to neutral. If I come forward way onto my toes and feel my heels start coming off the ground with my knees nice and straight and locked out and I want to go back, I just push into those front walls a little bit and bring myself back to neutral. This for him is very important. He'll want to spend a lot of time going from both hands on, 
to one hand on, to just the other hand on, to no hands on, working on that weight shift control, getting that sense of knowing where am I when I'm shifting left, right, front, back, as well as what we call the hula hoop action, where I'm moving around in a diagonal pattern and get a sense of what does it feel like when I shift my weight diagonally. So bilateral amputation, bilateral prosthetics, it's much more about balance control, sway control, than it is about finding center. Thanks for watching, and we hope that you found this helpful. This video is part of a series on prosthetic interventions, ranging from managing the residual limb after amputation to running with a prosthesis. We encourage you to view our other videos in this series and to share them as well. To stay up to date on our latest content, click the link in the corner to subscribe and let us know what you think in the comments section below.